look at the resolution again. Disruptive innovation in the financial sector can no longer respond to the daily challenges of poor people. You will now need all your experience, you will need your sharp intellects, and you will need your clickers. Unlike wannabe Steve Jobs, and like 60% of the people in this room, Oreco and I believe that disruptive innovation can respond to the daily needs of, of poor people. First, some definitions. Disruptive innovation means using technology in new ways to change the way markets work. Financial sector ranges from the microfinance institutions to the fintech to the insurance to the traditional banks. Daily challenges, we're talking about tools that can provide meaningful solutions to help poor people manage day to day, um, invest in the future and deal with risk. There are five reasons, just plus many more, that we believe that this can happen. First, the financial sector has a track record in delivering disruptive innovation that solves problems. Microfinance applied lending technologies in new ways to help micro-entrepreneurs grow their businesses. Mass retail banks stripped down technology that was meant for high street banks to deliver mass accounts to the retail market. Mobile money took technology that was meant to basically buy airtime, SIM toolkit and USSD, to deliver an, a solution that helps people send money home to access their social networks, and now is used for a plethora of use cases that uh, directly affect the daily needs of poor people. Pay as you go took bill pay and metered use to deliver assets and reduce costs for people. Digital credit and savings took bill pay plus scoring to deliver new solutions for people. And recent research that we have in Kenya shows that the top uses are for business, farm, and education. Second, the acceleration of the pace of change, creating new opportunities for disruption. In Kenya, it took 115 years for banks to reach 25% of Kenyans. It took mobile money two years. Microfinance never reached 25% of the population. Digital credit and savings did that in five years. Landlines never reached 25% of the population. Mobile phones did that in 16 years, and smartphones did it in eight. Data released just yesterday predicts that 80% of Kenyan phone lines will be smart by 2022. Number three. With increased mobile penetration, especially smartphones, increased connectivity and digitation will help us discover new things about the daily challenges that poor people face by being able to monitor what they do with this connectivity and truly create value for people, it, like we heard about with the customer-centric guide this morning. Four, increasing opportunities and incentives to partner with those outside the financial sector. We just heard about this. Banks partnering with people in agriculture, health, technology, other sectors. And in Kenya, there were 70 applications last year from banks to the central bank to uh, launch new products. Almost all of them were across the mobile channel and in partnership with people outside of their normal day-to-day. -day. Finally, new technology is evolving in ways that don't even exist now that are gonna help us solve these problems and en enable solutions to be more profitable. We heard yesterday about business models that aren't yet profitable. Disruptive innovation may be the only way that we can do that. How can we extend the success of short-term digital credit, which currently helps with daily needs to long-term investment needs? How can we use artificial intelligence paired with chatbots to inject behavioral science insights into and nudges into financial solutions? How can smartphones be used to create new user interfaces for intuitive money management that helps people manage day to day? So, building on these five things, we believe that disruptive innovation will continue to respond to the daily challenges of poor people and help and do it in better ways, in more ways than my colleague thinks. Hashtag, disruptive innovation delivers value to poor people. Stay with us.